it's good to be with you. Welcome to Class Outside. Today, we're going to learn how to convert a highly detailed mesh into a low detail mesh. While high detail, otherwise known as high poly models, may look great, they can actually be a lot harder to use and manage. High poly models are high in poly count or shapes used to construct them. This requires more storage space and longer transfer speeds. High poly models also take longer to render and animate. Each poly or polygon is a shape made up of multiple points called vertices. Animations use mathematics to move these vertices for us. So the more vertices there are in a high poly model, the more math the CPU running the animation needs to perform. If we lower the poly count, we can still retain quite a bit of information while lowering the requirements to store and transfer our model, and also improving the time to render and animate them. For this project, we will need a 3D model and 3D modeling software. For 3D modeling software, I will be using the free tool Blender. For a 3D model, I will be demonstrating with this photogrammetry scan of a carved tree trunk by 3D HD Scan on Sketchfab. It is over 40,000 vertices. I wonder what we can whittle this down to while still making it look good. Let's open that up in Blender, remove the default objects and import our GLB file. This is a good time to inspect the initial poly count of our mesh. We can check our vertices in edit mode. Whoa, this mesh is very dense. It's over 9,000 vertices. It's actually over 40,000. I wonder what we can whittle this down to. Let's begin by clearing up our mesh a little bit. Go to edit mode and click A to select all the vertices. Under mesh, cleanup, we can merge vertices by distance. This will do a couple things. It will start lowering our vertex count. It will also clear up any overlapping vertices that may not be connected. Keep going up on the scale until you start to see a meaningful change in the look of the object. I went to about 0.16. This may vary if you're working on a different model. This is also a good time to delete any vertices that we may not desire, like all these around the base. Open edit mode, turn on x-ray, and press C to make our cursor able to select areas. Go around and delete the bulk of the vertices we shouldn't need. That alone brought us down over half of our vertex count. This process is especially useful for models taken via photogrammetry. Now, we can use some modifiers to edit our mesh a bit further. Click your mesh in the Modifiers tab and select Remesh. Whoa, our model turned to dust. <laughs> this happens sometimes. Select Smooth and begin to raise the octree depth. You should see the features start to come back. If you don't, I walk through solving this problem during part of the video How to Fix Holes in Instant Meshes, linked down below. Let's apply the modifier. What we just did is remake our mesh with vertices in a more grid-like pattern. Now, we're ready for the next step, using the decimate modifier. Decimating uses math to determine which vertices to remove with the intent to minimally affect shape change. When we add the decimate modifier, select collapse. You may drag the slider or input values into it. I find it helpful to try various percentages like 0.75 for 75% and then 0.5 for 50 and so on. As we reduce the ratio, we will begin to see groups of vertices or connection points dissolve away into edges or lines. The minute changes may be easier to see in wireframe mode. The vertices around our detailed features should remain largely intact such as our eyes, ears, and grooves. Continue to adjust the ratio until you begin seeing it affect your important details. I applied my changes at a ratio of 0.02. Now we're no longer over 9,000. We have brought this mesh of 40,000 vertices all the way down to just 2,500, while retaining most of the detail. After decimating, your mesh may look very blocky. This is because there are now less vertices to smooth out its look. If you want a smoother look, Without increasing the poly count, you can try the Shade Smooth feature. This does not change your mesh's layout, just the look of the current layout. Select your object, go to Edit Mode, press the A key to select all vertices, then click the Face option. Click on Shade Smooth. You should see some of your mesh now has a smoother look. 
After a layout change or retopology to this degree, it's very likely the textures no longer appear properly on your mesh. I've linked another video that covers the steps to add back textures from a high poly model. We took this detailed mesh of over 40,000 vertices and reduced it to below 9,000 while still retaining most of the mesh's features. Before going any further, it's important to consider what this mesh will be used for. If it's going to become an unmoving prop, you may want to perform the process of remeshing and decimating an additional time. By doing this, I was able to bring the mesh below 600 vertices. If you're planning to animate your model, you'll want to spend a bit more time making sure certain groups of vertices are available for the animation you'd like. For example, if the vertices of a model's arm are also the vertices in the model's back, the animation may appear incorrect. A lot of considerations go into accomplishing this, and it can be very dependent on the situation. It may be easier to work with a vertex layout of squares or quads. I've linked a video detailing how to make any mesh into quads down in the description. Look at that. Together, we have taken a high poly model and reduced its vertex count by a major degree. Please, let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Have a great day, and thank you for attending class outside.